Medjugorje, Yugoslavia. Hello, I'm Barbara Valentine, and I invite you to join us on this video for a special pilgrimage to Medjugorje, where it has been reported that the Blessed Virgin Mary has been appearing to six young village children since June 1981. Millions of people come to Medjugorje from all over the world, searching for peace, consolation, and hope. Many leave crosses, as you see behind me, bearing their personal mementos and prayer requests. The church is currently studying the phenomena to determine if these apparitions are authentic. But in the meantime, the messages of peace, prayer, and fasting have helped thousands of people grow closer to God. In this first half hour, we'd like to share with you some of the experiences that our Heart of the Nation crew and I witnessed in the small farm village of Medjugorje. It's often asked, could the Mother of God truly be appearing to six Yugoslavian teenagers? And if so, why here and why to young people? The local Franciscan priests here in Medjugorje believe that the apparitions are authentic. They explain that the reason for the apparitions has to do with the name, location, and political system in Medjugorje. The name Medjugorje means between the hills, and Yugoslavia is between two political systems that of the East and West. The Franciscans say that this Soviet bloc country was appropriate for the Madonna to appear because of its natural location where East meets West. But then people ask, why does she appear to young people? It was also to young children that the Virgin Mary appeared in Lourdes and Fatima. It's been explained that a mother is naturally drawn to children. They are less sophisticated and more open and honest to apparitions. The children, or visionaries as they are now called, are reported to have first encountered the Blessed Mother in June 1981 on this hill outside of Medjugorje. This simple cross marks the exact spot. The place is now called the Hill of Apparitions, and it's generally the first stop for many pilgrims arriving here. The Virgin Mary is said to have first appeared on this spot to Ivanka Ivankovic. Ivanka was walking up the hill with her friend, Mariana Dragitovich. According to Ivanka, she suddenly saw a bright shimmering form hovering over the ground, and she shouted to her friend, Mariana, look, it's the Madonna. Mariana, who was too afraid to look, shielded her eyes from the spot and then ran back down the hill with Ivanka. The next day, with Ivanka still in an overwhelming state of excitement, the two girls returned to the hill with four friends. They were Vitske Ivankovic, Ivan Dragitovic, Mariana Pavlovic, and Yakov Gorlo. Shortly after the six youngsters arrived, the Blessed Mother again reportedly appeared. She was visible to all six youngsters, but not to the other 15 villagers who also came along to investigate. Suddenly, the six youngsters are said to have been propelled up the hill faster than humanly possible. According to the villagers, they were unable to keep up with the youngsters who moved up the hill so fast, it was as if their legs were made of wings. The youngsters report that the same mysterious force that swept them up the hill then gently threw them down to their knees at the foot of a beautiful lady made of light standing on a cloud. The lady is said to have told them that she came to them with a message of peace, a peace that can be achieved through conversion and prayer, and she introduced herself as the Queen of Peace. These six children, ranging in age from 10 to 17, became known as the Six Seers or Visionaries. This picture was taken on the second day of their meeting with the Blessed Mother. <laughs> Vitska is often described as the most outgoing of the visionaries, quite willing to spend time with the many pilgrims who come to visit. 
Her love of the Blessed Mother quickly becomes evident when you watch her face and hear her talk, especially when talking of her special friend, the Blessed Mother. Vitka, what does our Holy Lady look like? A lady is wearing a gray dress, a long one, and she's having a white veil. She's got black hair, blue eyes, nice red teeth, and she's got a crown made of stars. And she's not standing on the ground, but she's standing on the clouds. On some very special days, like Easter and Christmas, she comes in a golden dress, and on a Christmas day, she's uh, having a baby Christ in her arms. Does the Blessed Mother ever laugh? Yes, I can see her laughing. She's just like we are, a human being. Look at us at a moment. We are smiling and not smiling. And so Our Lady is. She comes sometimes with uh, more joy, sometimes with less joy. But you can read it from her face. The initial apparitions are said to have lasted for 45 minutes or longer and continued to occur on Podbrado Hill, known as the Hill of Apparitions. News traveled quickly of the unusual phenomena in Medjugorje. Within a couple of weeks, the daily crowd numbered up to 15,000 people. They came to observe the visionaries, to pray with them, and to look for miraculous signs. The Yugoslavian government became alarmed at these large gatherings and fearing a possible uprising, banned the young visionaries from the hill. The seers then met on a daily basis in the chapel of St. James, the parish church in Medjugorje. But once again, the visionaries were presented with a new obstacle. The local bishop, who had a long-standing rivalry with the Franciscan priests of Medjugorje, banned the visionaries from meeting in a public church space. The visionaries were then forced to meet with the Blessed Mother in a small rectory bedroom in St. James, where the visions continued to occur on a daily basis. Parapsychologists and scientists examined the seers during these sessions and concluded that the visionaries are sincere in what they are saying. For others, these scenes of ecstasy speak for themselves as to the sincerity of these young people. The scientists report that when the seers go into a vision, they all turn and focus their eyes within one-fifth of a second of each other, and they all appear to have their eyes focused on the same spot. Doctors and friends of the visionaries report that the youngsters are normal with average IQs and normal interests. Medjugorians report that if anything, these youngsters are more humble than most people and have little interest for increased prestige or wealth. We're told that the visionaries give any gifts of money that they receive to the church. The visionaries report that they not only see and talk with the Madonna, but they also pray with her, sing with her, and from time to time touch her. They also say that they have asked the Blessed Mother why she has not revealed herself to others, and she has replied, Blessed are they who believe but do not see. The visions now take place in the church choir loft, which is inaccessible to the public. The visionaries tell us that the Blessed Mother talks about ten secrets regarding chastisements that the world will suffer if there is not true conversion. Two of the six seers have already been told the ten secrets, and they no longer have visions. The Blessed Mother says that when she stops appearing to the other visionaries, the chastisements could begin. We're told that the nature of the chastisements will be announced three days before they commence. But if people wait until then to convert, it could be too late. Vitska now has visions about once a month. I asked her what the Blessed Mother wants from us. What Our Lady wants us is uh, to follow her messages. And this is uh, love and peace, conversion, prayer and fasting. She wants us to pray every day with an open heart and with a big love. When you pray, dear children, you become more beautiful. You become like flowers which after the snow show forth their beauty. And so you, dear children, after prayer before God, display everything that is beautiful, so that he may make of you a harmonious and beautiful flower for heaven.
come here for a lot of different reasons. And I think the reason I'm here is different than a lot of people. Is I came out of a tragedy. And I kind of need some inner peace. or I need to know that there are reasons that things happen. It's so easy after a tragedy to blame God for it. And just, you know, it's real easy to go away from your religion. And I think I need something to bring, pull me back in to understand life and, you know, the hardships. Michelle Mattingly and her friend Catherine Phelan recently experienced the horror of having both their younger brothers die together in an automobile accident. As it would be for most families, the Mattingleys and the Phelans found it devastating. Shortly after the tragedy, Michelle's mother and Catherine's parents made a pilgrimage to Medjugorje. I asked Michelle if the trip changed her mother in any way. My mother were Catholic, but she wasn't real religious. And this has changed her so much. Just helped her understand, you know, be able to deal with it. I don't think she could have made it, you know, if she had not come here. And she has so much inner peace. And going over, the, over to Mr. she was a wreck. And she's just able to with life so well now. Catherine, I realize this is your first day in Medjugorje, but what are your expectations of this pilgrimage? My parents came, and before they came, they were... They came because of my brother's death a few months ago, and they were um, obviously very upset and torn up about it, had a lot of questions about their faith, but they came back from Medjugorje with a really sense of peace that I've heard a lot of people get from here, and that's what I was hoping to get, is just peace with myself and my faith and with you know, what's happened in our family that has, has changed things. There are three things that every pilgrim to Medjugorje must do. Visit the Hill of Apparitions, attend Mass in St. James Church, and hike up Mount Krizovic to pray at the cross on the mountaintop. Part of the ritual on the way up is to sing and pray at the 14 stations of the cross, as with this young Yugoslavian. The cross was built in 1933 at a time when there was a terrible drought that caused the crops to die. The villagers believed that if they could erect this cross to God on the 1900th anniversary of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, they would be helped. As it turned out, from that year on, there has not been another drought. The cross was built by the townswomen who hiked up the rocky mountainside every day, carrying concrete on their backs, 1,700 feet up and 1,700 feet down. Many of the local village women regularly climbed the hill barefoot as their penance to the Lord. When pilgrims arrive in this small hamlet of about 400 families, it can be quite a change of pace for those from western cities. Life is slower and more informal, with a pleasant mix of the old and the new. Most pilgrims that come here are part of a tour group. They don't stay in hotels, but rather they stay with the Yugoslavian families. These Medjugorjean families used to put up the pilgrims for free. However, the Yugoslavian government now require that the families charge a fee, with 60% of it going to the government. While I imagined beforehand difficult accommodations, they turned out to be quite lovely. Actually, one of my most pleasant traveling experiences. Many of the locals have rebuilt their homes to accommodate the tremendous influx of pilgrims. I am a craftsman, and the pilgrimages to Medjugorje have affected my profession and my work. First, I started to rebuild my house when the first pilgrims started coming to Medjugorje, and now we take care of them. We accommodate them into our home, and we welcome them and try to give them enough warmth and a pleasant atmosphere. Uh, the people in this town, they had no chance to talk to the other people all around the world, and now they have a big crowd in the village and a lot of change in their life. But uh, they know that all the people, they come here, they came to pray, to fast, and to be, to be with them. And they're very happy about their coming because uh, Our Lady said once that with the praying, with the fasting, we could even stop the wars. And that's why we are very happy to have all the people praying and fasting with us. Medjugorje is predominantly made up of Catholics, and they take the Madonna's messages to heart, fasting on bread and water. Those people who are sick 
fast by giving up something that is special to them. The townspeople also spend many hours a day in prayer. I asked Jelska Estoyic about other ways that the community has changed. I think that all the people have more time to be together, to pray together, you know, and just to be happy together. But before that, they were running to work to make some more money and everything, but now I think they have more time to be together, to be in church and to pray together. Find the time to pray as a family. Also, remember the dead. Give them joy by having masses said. And don't demean the poor who ask you for a piece of bread. Help them and God will help you. Perhaps the blessing that a poor person gives you in gratitude will be realized because God listens to him. Thank you for your response to my call. While the apparitions are generally only seen by the visionaries, hundreds of people claim seeing unusual phenomena in the area every day. One of the most common phenomena seen by pilgrims and townspeople alike is what's called the dancing sun. Cameras have not been able to truly document what can often be seen by the naked eye. I was privileged to be able to see the phenomenon along with other people on our pilgrimage. We compared notes afterwards and realized that we all saw a similar thing. It begins with the bright sun suddenly turning darker as a bright glowing circle around the sun starts to get brighter, almost like an eclipse. Some people say it looks like the Holy Eucharist has appeared in front of the sun. And then the middle part of the sun starts beating, much like a heartbeat. Some people report that it appears to pulsate out towards them as it beats. Then the inner part starts spinning, somewhat like a revolving firework. And as it spins, it casts off beams of golden hues. Some of the golden hues are in the shape of a cross. Oh my God, look at the sun. The closest thing I've seen to a photographic documentation of the dancing sun is this home movie made by Elaine Tuasan of Los Angeles, California. It's jumping, look. You see it? Oh, my God, thank you. Oh. Father Roberts, the Heart of a Nation spiritual advisor, has made a number of pilgrimages to Medjugorje, including this one with us. I asked him what he thinks of the miraculous signs. Father, do you believe in the apparitions? Yes, I do believe in the apparitions now, I'm very sure, in my mind, even though I would, I, I would defer to the teaching church. If the church said tomorrow I wasn't supposed to, I'd stop. But, you know, I, I, there was a time when I doubted. And in fact, I was even prepared not to even talk about it because I wasn't sure. And I'm sure there are people in the world who hear about it who are going to not, who are going to doubt. And this is where I'm at now, I say to myself, and I say to them, you know, let's supposing it's a hoax. Let's supposing it isn't true. It's a possibility. The church is holding that possibility until she t pronounces on it. If it isn't true, eight and a half million people have been converted by it. Mm. Eight and a half million people have turned their lives over to God, are reading the Bible, are praying every day, are fasting for peace. That's more than a lot of us clergy have managed to do. <laughs> but on the other hand, what if it is true, and I believe it is, what about those who haven't converted? What if she really is appearing and saying to the world, this is your last chance? Mm. What if she really is appearing and saying, I'm not just here to make the sun dance, I'm not here to do tricks. I'm here to change the world. I'm here to warn the world. You have some pictures, Father, that you were going to share with me. Some photos that along the way you have collected. Yeah, people send me photographs. You know, I don't even own a camera. And um, they send me these photographs that I think are interesting. This one here was given to me um, by a pilgrim. It said, a pilgrim heard his name called out uh, three times while he was on the, the mountain of the cross. He turned and there was no one there. He photographed the cross, and when the photo was developed, he found in place of the cross the mother of God with the child Jesus in his arms. As you can see, it's all kind of very beautiful picture, but everything seems to be in light. What is this picture over here? This picture was sent to me by 
someone who said that they were in the room with the apparitions when she used to appear in the little room. It was so crowded that they couldn't really get a good shot. So they just held the camera above their head and aimed it at the blank wall. And when it came out, this picture of the face came oh. out. I think this one here is interesting. You can see here um, a flowing Virgin Mary above the crowd in the church. And it's definitely the Church of Medjugorje. Father, how authentic do you think these pictures are? So I don't really think that's an important part, though. I, I, I have them from out of interest. It's certainly a good, uh, you know, you start a conversation with someone who doesn't believe. They look at that and they go, wow, maybe there's something. It makes them think. It makes, opens them up. See, I find, you know the biggest people that doubt today are clergy. People that are into religion, people that are into God. They say, I don't need this. Well, of course they don't need it, but some people do. But the, what I would say to them is, okay, you know, are you converting people? I go to parish after parish after parish where people are half dead. There's no life. Where have we seen prayer like we've seen in Medjugorje? Where have we seen faith like we've seen in Medjugorje? Where have we seen Catholics singing like they're singing in Medjugorje? Where have we seen people lining up for confessions like they're doing? Nowhere in the world are thousands of people lining up for confession. Nowhere else in the world are people reading the Bible as they're reading it there and praying and fasting. And so, you know, that's the miracle to me. The visionaries tell us that the Blessed Mother is calling for worldwide conversion. Many people wonder if this applies to people of other faiths. I ask Visco whether Our Lady is asking non-Catholics to convert to Catholicism. Our Lady says that we are all the same before the God, and it is not the God who have separated people through the religions. These are the people that have separated themselves and everyone is supposed to pray and believe in his own way and in his own religion. Do you have any suggestions or recommendations for our teenage viewers? First of all, I would like to greet young people and tell them that the only right way is the Christ way today in the world there is so much evil and young people have given themselves to drugs, alcoholism and the similar things. All I want to tell them is to take the rosary in their hands and to pray and open their hearts to God. Using the rosary to open our hearts to God has been used throughout the ages to bring us closer to God through His Mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary. The rosary is very much in evidence here in Medjugorje not only with the old, but also with the young. Father Roberts brought to our attention one American pilgrim who had a marvelous rosary-inspired experience after his mother returned home from Medjugorje, an experience that has now led James Pfeiffer here. His mother came in November. His mother had a conversion experience. His mother really turned on to the Lord. and She was telling me that she was really feeling bad that she hadn't really raised these kids properly in the church. And so she gave them to the Blessed Mother right here on that mountain, on Apparition Mountain. When she got back, uh, she came in late and I was already in bed asleep and I didn't see her until the next morning. She came in and she handed me these rosary beads. Now, I immediately put them around my neck and when I did, she had already left the room. I sat up and I looked at them and I thought for a while and I started crying. I didn't know why I started crying. It was just uh, a warm feeling inside of me. Um, it is, I can't explain it. But for some reason, I felt a need to come here. When we finally got here, you could just feel the peace around here. You could feel the Blessed Mother. You could feel the mountains, everything around here. It all relates to why we're here, and that is to praise God and to learn how to pray. Dear children, today again I am calling you to prayer and to completely surrender to God. You know that I love you and I am coming here out of love so that I can show you the path to peace and salvation for your soul. Let the rosary always be in your hand as a sign to Satan that you belong to me. Pray, and I will pray with you. We hope you've enjoyed the first part of our pilgrimage experience. Coming up on the second half of this video, we'll visit with Ivan Dorekovich during his vision in the choir loft. 
We'll talk with American pilgrims about the graces they received in Medjugorje. Hear from Vitska Ivankovic about a trip she describes to heaven and much, much more. Every Thursday for the last seven years, a message reportedly from the Mother of Christ has been dictated to one of the six Yugoslavian teenagers. They are messages about peace that can be achieved through prayer and conversion. The visions of the Blessed Mother have been getting shorter and shorter. While in 1981 they lasted three quarters of an hour, they now last only a few minutes. Only four of the original visionaries still have visions, which first took place on the Hill of Apparitions, then the chapel of St. James Church, later in a rectory bedroom, and now in the choir loft. This new apparition site is closed to the public, but thanks to the kind invitation to the Franciscan priests in Medjugorje, we were invited to stay in the loft for the Blessed Mother's reported daily appearance. Our spiritual advisor, Father Ken Roberts, was with us in the choir loft to observe Ivan Dorkitovich during his vision, a spiritual and memorable time for all of us as we experience something out of the ordinary in this room. The day outside was a normal overcast day, while down below in the church, people were praying the rosary. In the choir loft where we were gathered, there were a few long benches, a simple table, some flowers, and a framed picture of the Blessed Mother. Ivan started praying, and then, looking up, he focused his eyes at a spot about five feet away. He obviously appeared to be listening and conversing with someone. During his vision, we noticed a couple of faint flashes of light, and then we heard the sound of a howling wind. Following the wind, Father Roberts, who had been kneeling, mysteriously fell backwards. And if you listen carefully, you will hear the sound of his body hitting the floor. For about three minutes, Yvonne intently prayed and conversed with Mary. Finally, we saw his eyes follow her in an upward direction, and the vision was over. The scene had both a natural quality to it and a supernatural one. There was something natural about a young man praying, yet there was something very obviously supernatural about the young man in a state of ecstasy while praying. During this time, I was overwhelmed with the feeling that the Blessed Mother could be right there in our midst. Afterwards, I asked Father Roberts to describe what he experienced during the vision. Father, how would you describe what happened to us up in the choir loft? It was an amazing experience. I think it's probably the most unique experience of my life. First of all, as you know, we were up there, and there was the two camera people uh, from Heart of the Nation. Uh, you were sitting to the, to the right, uh, watching Ivan face on, and there was the Croatian priest, Father Slavko, and that German countess who was his interpreter, and myself, and that was all that was up there with Ivan. And yet when I knew enough about it when he knelt after praying, that was a time when Mary appeared. So I knelt behind him, and as I'm looking at that blank space, my first thoughts were, wow, you know, is there anything really happening here? A little doubt came upon me. What am I doing staring at a wall? <laughs> now we're silly if, we're, if there's nothing really happening. And <clears throat> the first thing I noticed was the lights. And I looked toward you, thinking maybe you were letting off a flashbulb, and I saw there was no cameras. And I know there was no cameras down below, because then people were all praying, and they're facing the altar. And even if they were, they wouldn't reach up that far. So I thought, well, who, maybe, what, who, did you have a camera? And you didn't. And as I looked to see the lights, 
um, there was that wind which everybody can see on the screen. And it was like a force that lifted me and just laid me back very gently on the ground with, with a bang, as they can all hear. And I, what comes to my mind is that the beginning of the story of the apparitions, when it said the children were lifted up by a, a, a supernatural force up that mountain. Mm. And to me, it, even though there was a noise of the wind and I heard the wind and I saw the light, it was like a force that lifted me. And you, you were there to witness that. And I was out. I yeah. mean, just out. So I and I knew you were okay. I knew it wasn't a heart attack. I yeah. knew that the, yeah. the Holy Spirit Well, was... I heard you say you're slain in the Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then when you started to weep. <laughs> yeah, it was an incredible moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dear children, I am your mother, and therefore I want to lead all of you toward perfect holiness. Pray. In particular, every morning, read a passage from the Gospel. Plant the seed of God's Word within you, and let it come alive within you often during the day, especially during moments of discouragement. Thank you for your response to my call. The visionaries have told us of many miraculous things they've witnessed as a result of the Blessed Mother's befriending them. One of the most astounding reports has to do with the trip Vitska said she made with the Madonna to heaven. She arrived at Yaakov's house and I was there and we were just outside in the garden and she took us to the heaven. What are the people in heaven like? What do they look like? Heaven is a huge, big space with a brightness and a great light that doesn't exist on the earth. And you can see the people in pink, white, and uh, yellow dresses moving around, singing. And you can see above them the little angels just also moving around. And our lady said, you can see how people in heaven are happy. It's very hard to describe how they look. Actually, what you see there is on their faces, there is a lot of joy and lots of happiness. You can see them being gathered in groups, enjoying, laughing. And it's some kind of a happiness that doesn't exist on the earth. However, here on earth, the reported presence of the Blessed Mother has brought happiness to thousands of people throughout the world. Father Philip Pavish was happily surprised when he received a message said to be from the Blessed Mother. Father Pavish is an American Franciscan priest who was last serving in the Holy Land. He was wondering if he could be of help in Medjugorje since his parents were from Yugoslavia. Through friends, he was able to get a message to Ivan asking the Blessed Mother what he should do. Ivan sent a reply back. And I got this letter saying, in response to your question, is our lady's will that you come to Medjugorje, she says. And I went, she says, you know, and I was almost afraid to read it. And the answer was, if he has will to come to help us to spread God's message. So I thought, oh, sweet Jesus, you know, holy mother Mary, a message. So I started me on a long life change and my pilgrimage continued and I ended up joining this province of the Franciscans so I could hopefully serve here the rest of my life. Father Pavish believes that the visionaries are telling the truth, that they are actually seeing the Mother of God. Like Father Pavish, the other Franciscan priests in Medjugorje also believe the seers. Ironically, one of the few people to doubt the visionaries is the local Yugoslavian bishop. Our bishop is strongly against it. Uh, he's in effect said it's all invented, that we've invented the messages, and uh, uh, that we're preaching falsehood, that this will be one of the greatest disgraces of the church since the time of Jesus Christ. He's made some very strong statements so he's even assigned us, you know, that for preaching falsehood to the, as he said, the pits of hell. I'm just glad it's not up to him to assign us that place. 
Go Most on. people explain Bishop Zanuck's denial of the visions as a reaction to a long-standing rivalry between the diocesan priests represented by Bishop Zanuck and the Franciscan priests of Medjugorje. The rivalry is a result of a long political history having to do with an Islamic occupation of Yugoslavia that divided the Franciscan and diocesan priests. It's said that the diocesan priests suspect the Franciscan priests of having fabricated the apparitions so that the Franciscans can claim that they have the support of the Virgin Mother. Naturally, the Franciscans deny this. For an apparition to be authenticated by the Church, it requires a period of study and finally recognition by the Holy Father. The Vatican's Cardinal Ratzinger is now coordinating the investigation. He's taken it out of the jurisdiction of the local bishop serving Medjugorje and appointed the Yugoslavian Bishops' Conference to review the authenticity of the apparitions. They, in turn, have told Bishop Zanuck that until the church completes their investigation, he must stop his public opposition to the visionaries. People wonder, what does the Pope think about this? One thing, is, and this was wonderful, just in January, we had 33 priests and three bishops, including an archbishop, come from Brazil just to make a private retreat here. But the best part is they went to see the Holy Father. January 13th, they were in a general audience. The Pope heard. So he called for them to have a private mass in his chapel on Friday, January 15th, because they were going to Medjugorje. Then he blessed them for their retreat in Medjugorje and asked for their prayers. So they came right from Rome to here from the Pope with his blessing to make retreat in Medjugorje. Now that didn't get publicized. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe it will now, Father. <laughs> but the Holy Father blessed them just because they were coming to Medjugorje. Dear children, today again I am calling you to complete conversion, which is difficult for those of you who have not chosen God. You see God only when sicknesses, problems, and difficulties come to you. And you think that God is far from you and is not listening. No, dear children, that is not the truth. God is always there. It's been seven years since this picture was taken of the visionaries on the day after the first reported apparition. While they have been through a tremendous scrutiny with all types of pressures, they remain as humble and normal as ever. Ivanka Ivankovic is now married and currently lives in Medjugorje with her husband and baby. She no longer has daily visions, but says she still sees the Blessed Mother once a year on the anniversary of her first apparition. Mariana Dragitovic was the first visionary to stop seeing the Madonna on a daily basis. However, she says she still has visions on extraordinary occasions. She is currently studying agronomy at a school in Sarajevo, Yugoslavia. Ivan Dragitovic, no relationship to Mariana, still has regular visions of the Madonna. He recently completed his mandatory year of military service and now works on the family farm. Maria Palovic says she still has daily visions. She recently went on a spiritual retreat to Italy for several months and plans on following a religious vocation. Yakov Kolo says Our Lady still appears to him from time to time at his home. Both his parents died since the apparitions began, so he now lives with relatives and attends a nearby technical school. Vitska Ivankovic still has visions about once a month on dates pre-announced by the Blessed Mother. Over a two-year period of apparitions, the life of Our Lady was revealed to Vitska, which she says will be published upon the Blessed Mother's request. These youngsters, average in every way except for their visions, have had a profound effect on the thousands of pilgrims who come here. I asked Father Pavich about the changes the pilgrims experience. Oh, many things. I, I have a lot of hours hearing confessions. And uh, one of the things that really has struck me, beside the fact of so many people coming back after years, 30 years, 20 years, 
long term and um, people that have dropped out of the church, uh, a lot of hurts, a lot of woundedness. But and people will come and have a you know good confession and say, ah, dang, you know now I can go home. It's like they came here for this. And uh, so many times that's the case, real change of life. I mean, many times somebody will say, bless me, Father, my last question was three weeks ago, but before that it was 20 years. Or So there's just tremendous graces that are hard to account for. It's like um, people will say, I never ever thought that I, sh I never confessed this, but since I've been here, it's been bothering me. I've seen, I've heard that so many times. They get a special grace to remember something that they would never even dreamed of having said. As Father Pavich says, going to confession is a turning point for many pilgrims coming to Medjugorje. And this included Catherine Phelan. And at first I was thinking something was wrong with me. Maybe um, I came with the wrong attitude or I didn't have enough faith or something was wrong with me. But um, today has been just amazing. I went to confession this morning and I hadn't done that in years. And um, Afterward, I just felt, it seemed silly that I was called here to go to confession <laughs> so many miles to do that. But that's really, I mean, and um, I talked to Michelle and she felt the same way. It really it did something so much for me. Catherine and her friend Michelle traveled with Heart of the Nation on our pilgrimage to Medjugorje. As you recall from part one, the pain, grief, and anger which resulted from the death of their two brothers in a car accident led them to Medjugorje. It was heartwarming to see that in just five short days in Medjugorje, a healing had taken place in these young ladies. By comparing the look on their faces at the beginning of the pilgrimage, and now at the end, reveals their newfound strength and inner peace. Michelle, when we first got here on our wonderful pilgrimage to Medjugorje, we talked to you and we'd asked you what you expected to receive from this, this great time here in Medjugorje. Now this is our last evening together and we're about ready to go our own ways. I'd just like to know what did you receive from this, this time here in Medjugorje? Well, it's been a great experience and I can't even put into words what I've gotten out of it. But it took me a while to get it. Um, the first two days I didn't really feel anything. I felt a lot. I mean, I felt, you know, awe over the people and I felt the reverence and I did feel some spirit spirituality. But it wasn't like I walked into church and all of a sudden I felt this total conversion. Like, I kind of expected it. And I kind of expected I'd walk in and I'd have this feeling, you know, I'd be totally changed. And that wasn't, you know, what happened. And I was, well, why did you feel that was supposed to happen? I mean, was it something that you were programmed? I think people... I was programmed. I'd heard, you know, so many stories of people coming over here and totally coming back changed and everything. And that's what I expected in a sense. And that isn't what I got. And, you know, I, I was like... Why isn't anything happening to me? I mean, I'm feeling something, but, you know, what's wrong with me? I thought there was something wrong with me. And then all of a sudden, just, everything fits into place. And it didn't all happen at once. And it kind of came, came about in a strange way. It wasn't like I was in church, you know, and everything just set, set, set into place. It was kind of through the people I met, and hearing their stories. And it was like I met some people, girls from Singapore and talked to them. And I met this other boy who's 21 years old, and he had had experience where he had one of the miracles. He was able to see the sun. Hearing him talk and seeing his face, it kind of, all of a sudden this peace just came over me, and I'd gone to confession, and that helped a lot. It kind of, I don't know, the priest was wonderful, and it, the feeling kind of went through me, and I did the Station of the Cross, and I'd been up the mountain the day before, and, but when I went up the second time today, it was totally different. It was so weird. It was like a different mountain, you know, it wasn't the same really? thing. I mean, it was really, really different. And there's this, I don't know, it's like this peace. And it's so hard to explain. Because it's not like I'm totally changed, but I am in a sense. I mean, your personality doesn't change, but I will leave here with something that I didn't come with. You know, all the people, when they heard about Mary's apparition, they expected to see something, you know, and to hear something about that. But I think when they arrive here, and when they see the people praying and fasting around them, I think they just forget about that. Prayer and fasting, two words heard over and over again here in Medjugorje. People in prayer can be seen everywhere, on the hills, in the town, and at Mass. The seers report that the Blessed Mother has said that the Mass is the greatest prayer of God. Here in Medjugorje, Mass has been the site of many conversions. 
James Pfeiffer told Father Roberts and me about his newborn feelings. Well, I've really been listening to what is going on in Mass now. Used to, uh, you know, just sit there and be checking my watch every five minutes, just waiting to get out of Mass just as fast as I could, you know, first out the door and all that good stuff. But lately, I enjoy Mass. I sit there and I listen to what is going on. I pray along with everybody. And I really enjoy it. It, it means something to me now. While our trip to Medjugorje was relatively short, I'm sure the experience of Medjugorje will last much longer with me, the Heart of the Nation crew, and all the pilgrims who come here. You know, one of the most evident miracles of Medjugorje is the profound number of conversions, thousands of people returning to their faith. It may take a while for the church's investigation to determine the authenticity of the apparitions, but in the meantime, the reported messages from the Queen of Peace given to us by the visionaries are having a significant effect on the villagers and the millions of pilgrims who have journeyed here. In summary, the Blessed Mother's reported messages are calling for conversion, opening your heart to God, which can be expressed through penance and confession, prayer, communicating and listening to God. Fasting can promote our readiness for prayer. Peace, peace is what we get from conversion and prayer. As we close this video, I'd like to leave you with a few parting thoughts. Sometimes it takes longer for other people like it did for me. I mean, it took mm -hmm. a couple of days where other people, the first day they feel it. Mm -hmm. And they just, you know, they know there's something here. And it took me a little bit longer, but there definitely is something here. I can see it in your eyes. <laughs> <laughs> to all those that are watching uh, this program, uh, I would like to say that we are going to recommend you to Our Lady and that we are going to pray for you. And also, especially, we are going to recommend uh, the young people and those, especially those that are not able to come over here to Medjugorje. And uh, the Queen of Peace uh, is the, uh, the Queen of our heart and that we are going to uh, carry her in her heart for the whole life. God bless you. Dear children, today I invite all of you to begin a new life from now on. Open your hearts to the Lord of all hearts. Reveal to me all your sentiments and all your problems. I want to console you in your temptations. I want to fill you with peace with joy, and with the love of God. If you knew how much I loved you, you would weep for joy. Good old.